Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master back here on this Monday, uh, about uh, 11.46 a.m. here, California time, October 23rd, 2023. A bunch of 23s in there. Uh, what do we got going on this Monday? Hopefully everyone is enjoying their start of the work week. I uh, did see a little bit of uptick in earthquake activity here across the Kermadec Trench region last night. Did see a... Uh, Looks like a little earthquake activity. Although the USGS really not showing some of that movement, uh, it is being picked up here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like they've seen a, uh, a 4.6 and maybe a 5.0 in there as well. Pretty shallow earthquake activity. That one kicking off late last night into the uh, Kermadec Trench region. Not for sure why USGS is not picking up on it, but uh, let me double check, make sure, refresh this, because they're showing the uh, older activity from yesterday. Uh, do got one 4.6 up here in the Papua New Guinea area from this morning, but uh, kind of missing that activity along the Kermadec Trench, with it, which is uh, pretty important in terms of keeping track of the earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick, see what we got going on. Uh, looks like yesterday here, there was a uh, 5.2. Now, I'm trying to think if that's going to be one of the ones we see here on the globe. doesn't look like it. But a 5.2 being reported by the GeoNet servers yesterday. Um, see if we felt, see if anybody felt it. Looks like it was felt. Uh, 2011 total reports there, South Island, but it also was felt uh, up in the uh, North Island area. So that's quite a bit of uh, shaking going on from that earthquake. Not showing up from the uh, USGS though. So let's look at the earthquake drums and see how big of a signature that made. Let's see here, there it is. That's gonna be that five pointer. Looks like it was centered somewhere around South Island area potentially in that same region near the uh oh, what is it the rada peaks area where they seen uh i think they've seen a similar magnitude earthquake here a few weeks back but uh yeah it's pretty powerful looking earthquake south island area definitely looks like it could be a five pointer again usgs not picking up on it and it doesn't look like doesn't look like the GeoNet servers are picking up on, or the uh, EMSC data is picking up on it either. So, a little weird, but obviously it's a real earthquake. Quite a few folks did report filling this earthquake uh, in the South Island area of New Zealand. And it um, looks like mainly light to moderate shaking out there uh, from this specific earthquake, which struck pretty shallow at about five kilometers deep or so. Uh, looks like 25 kilometers northeast of Arthur's Pass for that uh, epicenter of this earthquake. All right, well, we'll continue to watch that area. We are expecting New Zealand to move, um, and that's a little bit of movement here. It has been relatively active across areas of the Australia Plate and down here across the divergent boundaries. Uh, so a little bit of uh, moderate movement taking place there across this area of New Zealand, but we'll continue to watch that for some further activity. Uh, up here into the uh, area around Japan, one earthquake here, about 9 o'clock this morning or so, on the Kurokamachaka Trench, 85 kilometers deep into this uh, major subduction zone. Aside from that, it uh, looks a little bit quieter here today across the area, and uh, it is showing on the um, Earthquake 3D globe here. There's that earthquake there in the uh, Kurokamachaka a lot of this activity across the Indonesia Islands area is uh, some smaller magnitude quakes there below the 4.0 threshold and some older movement quakes uh, up here in the circles, in the uh, kind of a darker circle around the Nepal area from yesterday. Uh, so continue to watch that um, up in the Alaska area, pretty quiet, not a whole lot showing up here on the globe. You can see here on the map as well, just a handful of smaller microquakes across the area today. For the uh, west coast, let's see what we got. Anything major cooking out here? Doesn't look like it. I think we got um, one more day of warm temperatures before some much cooler air coming in here. We'll get to that here in just a second. Did see a little bit of uh, small microquake activity down here off the Brawley Seismic Zone this morning. With a couple, two uh, looks like a 2.0 and a 1.2 on 
also down here into the imperial fault, kind of an extensional fault system here of the plate boundary, showing some uh, small microquakes in there as well. So uh, just a little bit of movement in there. We all know that that area is uh, very capable of producing a large damaging earthquake for the Southern California area, just a matter of time before that one hits. Texas and Oklahoma area, a little spotty out there. We got Yellowstone keying up here just right now as we speak with a 1.6. Let's go ahead and check that out and see what we got for the latest Yellowstone overviews here. Uh, looks like that's going to be the uh, earthquake right here in question. The one that's just coming in. The one that's reading a uh, 1.6 here outside of Mammoth, Wyoming, northwest corner of Yellowstone National Park. That's going to be this little earthquake. It did show up, uh, looks like, on a couple seismograph stations here. So gives you a good indicator of what the magnitudes may be and how big they need to be to show up across other seismograph stations there locally. It doesn't take a, a huge earthquake up here to uh, be noticeable. So a little 1.6 showing up on quite a few uh, seismograph stations there today within the last hour. All right, uh, what do we got here? Puerto Rico area, a handful of earthquakes here, and one off the plate boundary northward near the uh, Mona, north of the Mona Passage area. Uh, to 3.4, 10 kilometers deep for that earthquake. A uh, handful of earthquakes there in the South America region there today as well. But uh, overall, looks like uh, for the most part here, it looks still getting some activity in Australia, uh, northern Australia. This area has been um, somewhat active here over the past few days. Notice a lot of earthquake activity south here, some around Melbourne. Um, this is a little bit above what is normal out here as far as average background activity. Uh, so continue to watch this area. I think, I think a lot's going on here recently, uh, across areas down around New Zealand. It's, it's, I think it's still just kind of holding on. I, I think it's, uh, somewhat overdue around the New Zealand area in terms of larger scale activity. Uh, that 5.2 or 5 pointer that the GeoNet servers are reporting is really not uh, a big earthquake, but it's at least a little bit of movement going on. So just keep an eye on this area. The big island of Hawaii, Kilauea Volcano, still showing some earthquake activity. Uh, the latest of 1.9. Uh, I don't know if that depth is going to be correct there or not. 5.2 kilometers below surface. That is underneath automatic status, so this could get revised in terms of the uh, quality and the depth below the surface here. I think these are... Um, probably around one to two kilometers deep. So that one's a little bit deeper, but we'll see if they revise it. Uh, the latest information statement here on the HVO uh, website on Kilauea Volcano shows that the volcano is currently not erupting and still seeing some earthquake activity along with high levels of inflation there. Uh, they mentioned that eruptive activity is possible in the coming weeks or months. So we know magma is below it's just uh i think it's kind of trapped down there right now and uh we'll continue to see if we get a uh, further influx of magma from below increasing that uh, uh, level below the surface where the current magma is that could uh, amplify conditions there uh, around the kilowatt volcano so we'll keep an eye on that space weather activity here today still pretty much flatline uh, it's been a while since I've seen this type of activity here. Look at this. Just about as dead as can be in terms of solar flare activity. Now, it's not completely quiet. We did have a couple prominence eruptions here yesterday, blasting off the northern segment of the sun and also down south uh, within a couple hours of each other. But those were not Earth-directed whatsoever. So none of these are going to be <clears throat> headed towards Earth. Goodness, change in the weather. I was outside in the rain yesterday uh, enjoying it because I love it, but also at the same time, it seems like uh pick up a little uh, congestion there when I go outside and, and uh, enjoy the rain. Either way, I love it, so kind of have to go out there and um, recharge myself. I love the rain. I just got to deal with this, the after effects. All right, so looking at this here, Compared to today's activity, pretty quiet. Really no prominence eruptions blasting off today. As far as sunspot activity goes, this is from last night. Here's the most recent image. 
continues to show decline in the complexity here of the sunspots. There's just not a whole lot going on here uh, across the, um, the visible disk of the sun, and I think the same for the far side. Um, so we'll have to watch this. We are headed towards solar maximum. I, I don't think that was it. It's supposed to be sometime in uh, June of 2025, solar cycle 25. We do have a little um, area on the northeastern quadrant of the sun that's uh, a sunspot, but in, in terms of complexity, that looks relatively stable, but we'll continue to watch that for any signs of change. Uh, energy out there is pretty low as well. The SFI index down to 119. Goodness. So, um, yeah, pretty quiet out there on the sun for right now. Storm Prediction Center, uh, marginal risk in certain areas out here today, uh, mainly due to a 2% tornado chance down in Texas. Looks like San Angelo area and surrounding regions. Aside from that little hell threat up there in the areas around Minnesota. Uh, but aside from that, uh, there's not a whole lot of severe weather threat here today. I was looking at the uh, numerical models and... Uh, it looks like we got some cooler temperatures heading our way once again here for California. There's our low pressure that brought the rain. We're going to get uh, that out of here, and it looks like here's today's time frame, um, partially tomorrow. Uh, about normal temperatures. We're only supposed to be around 80 degrees or so before some cooler air comes in from the north. Uh, that's going to deepen right there over Oregon, but also here in Northern California as well. We're talking about well below average for uh, my area. It's just going to sit there and kind of spin around a little bit and intensify up north, bringing with it chances of snow uh, to the higher elevations in the mountains and uh, maybe some light precipitation out here in Northern California. But look at that. That cold air just wants to sink all the way down into Southern California, bringing with it some cooler temperatures. Out east, there is a ridge of high pressure that you guys are going to have to deal with. Uh, probably in the mix here tomorrow and through the remainder of the week with uh, above average temperatures for the folks out there in the orange. That's high pressure. It's going to stick around for a little bit. Looks like maybe towards um, the beginning of next week, there'll be some cooler air coming for your area. And of course, you can see this uh, pattern flip here that's very typical to see orange and blue blue and orange uh, on a uh, kind of a pattern type flip here but we'll keep an eye on this I'm hoping this high pressure system is not going to be like this I, I that shows some uh, above average temperatures there for November at least the first week of November but for now here in California got some cooler temperatures coming in here as we look at uh, uh, the low pressure heading our direction beginning tomorrow i want to bring up the uh new snow new snow goodness there's the mountains up in uh, oregon the cascades uh getting some snow from these uh, colder systems coming up this is next next uh five days or so uh, up in wyoming area yellowstone these guys are going to get a bunch of snow it looks like maybe talking about uh Oh, a foot or two of snow on some of these mountains. Also for the same up here in uh, the Cascades of Oregon and up into Washington. Going to get some snow as well. A handful of, uh, looks like a little bit of snow there for the Sierra Nevada around Reno, west of Reno. Uh, but aside from that, rain. Let's check out the rain accumulation out here and see what we got over the next five days. Not a whole lot. The system that's dropping down out of the north is not bringing with it a whole lot of precipitation. Uh, just basically cooler temperatures, uh, which is fine by me. I'm okay with some cooler temperatures here. Uh, come Thursday or so, you can see that uh, cooler air dropping down straight out of the north. And um, yeah, we're going to be looking at some chilly lows out here. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> temperatures, like I said, in the daytime here. Um, going to be a little chilly. This is a little below average for uh, Northern California. We're supposed to be, uh, I can't remember what our average is, but it's definitely not 59 degrees. And uh, either way, that looks like that's going to be the temperatures for the afternoon highs here for the majority of the week after today. Morning lows are going to be down into the 40s, it looks like, uh, and chilly up in the mountains with 20s. 
And way up north here, goodness, look at those cold temperatures dropping into Yellowstone area and uh, up into Montana outside of Great Falls. Well, Great Falls itself, 8 degrees, but this is a little taste of winter dropping in, and it's a big one. Look at that. It's covering a huge portion here of Canada. Alaska's in there as well. Um, so, yeah, just a little taste of what's coming up here for winter time. Goodness. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Have yourself a good Monday if you can. Take care, and we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on uh, this afternoon. Have a good one.